Hi everyone, uh, my name is Chris and uh, uh, I'm also known as Prince Gaston, I'm the guy who runs this YouTube channel. So in, in August of 2016, my girlfriend and I went on a wine trip through the Okanagan. We started in uh, the bottom at the Inner Soyuz and then traveled north and over the course of six, seven days, uh, we actually managed to visit 60 at uh, 60 wineries in uh, just about a week brought back 120 bottles so this is a recap of just the first day of events uh, this is burrowing owl i believe which was i think the third or i think the, the second winery on the on the first day beautiful place by the way it, it's uh, it's amazing that this is technically a desert that's just been planted green with a lot of wine fields uh, this is desert hills which is also uh, which is just after um a burrowing owl um, by the way, if you ever go on one of these trips, uh, the important thing is to regulate your wine input, uh, unless you just plan on hitting like one or two wineries because of, um, the, the portions are, I think, fair when you go to these places, but you can in the case of, of, of also this is, not, this is Black Hills, not Desert Hills. It's Black Hills, I'm sorry, because there's, there's Desert Hills and there's Black Hills, and uh, Desert Hills is later on. So this is Black Hills, a uh, beautiful place, by the way. But uh, Black Hills, we paid for, um, a, a, a more expanded wine tasting which is very generous in their portions and you get like six glasses three whites and three reds and if you plan on hitting as many wineries as we ended up doing you just can't handle yourself after one of them gives you very large portions it's um it's 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 yeah. It's the best thing to do is to kind of regulate your input and don't go with these large tastings unless you're just going to go to one winery. Uh, on this on day two, we went to Road 13, which had small samples but 12 of them. So it ended up really kicking the crap out of us by the afternoon. Um, so my suggestion is to go with the basic tastings, get the simple tastings, especially if you plan on hitting up more than one. We hit up on average about six or seven a day. Uh, with our Naramata day getting 12 and uh, yeah, you just can't do tw 12 full, you know, 12 visits with full glasses of wine each and so um, These especially if you don't have a lot to eat because by the time we hit up burrowing um, Excuse my knee there uh, When you go to these uh, places, there's not a lot of food now a lot of places like burrowing owl like uh, black hills do have restaurants so that's my other second advice is make sure you eat a lot and the other thing we also do, did is take on uh, a glass of water bring a bottle of water with us and so i was constantly drinking water throughout the whole day but um it's great to just listen to these guys speak because they're really really uh, really smart really know what they're talking about and they love to educate you on the uh, geography of the region and so forth um i say if i have to pick one region to go to um i even though i love naramata i think of soyuz i just felt better even though the wineries are further apart and do require a bit more of a drive um, the facilities are just generally larger there's a really great personality where in naramata a lot of them are smaller wineries so there's not much of a of a pageantry or, or a panache to them so they're nice and they've got cute little personalities, but the ones in Osoyoos really go to that extra mile to make themselves distinct. So Desert Hills is nothing like Black Hills, and Black Hills is nothing like Burrowing Owl, and this is Sage. Uh, this is probably my favorite winery of the whole damn trip. Um, Silver Sage uh, is not commonly found in a lot of places just because they do a lot of wine infusions. Um, it's I think it's really important that when you're doing... Um, going on a trip you definitely have to pick up silver sage it is a fantastic uh, winery very uh, for those people who are into to dry wines like my girlfriend who's a huge fan of crazy legs um i think silver sage is not going to rub you the right way because they are mostly on the sweeter side they do like uh, the infusions and which is the reason why there's definitely a fruity flavor to their wines i am not a dry wine drinker i like my whites i like my fruity reds i uh, so i really love the flavors of silver sage um i ordered a box a crate of these things got 12 of them shipped back um that's another thing which is a bit of a surprise um in Kelowna, you are able to combine bottles from different wineries and get them shipped back together as a way of trying to encourage people to pick up more wine these wineries won't so if you want a, a box of wine you have to get them all the same winery which is kind of disappointing 
I was kind of hoping that we could combine like six bottles from Burrowing Owl and six bottles from uh, Black Hills, but none of them do that. But it was really easy to get 12 bottles from Silver Sage, a couple of their, uh, couple of their dessert wines. Um, we went in August. August is busy, but not too busy. Silver Sage was probably the busiest we went to in a Soyuz by a large margin. This is me selecting all the wines. Um, so going in July is probably going to be even busier. I think the probably busiest winery we went to was probably, I want to say Dirty Laundry, which was funny just because ironic because it was the most remote. This is Church and State, which is right after Silver Sage. Uh, they've got two tasting rooms just on the outside and on the inside. They were in the outside because it's very hot. Even though it's August, it's very, very warm. And they are doing wine tastings in as well. And it's really nice. Just a beautiful place. The girlfriend really liked the uh, the musician. But uh, we ended up picking up probably... Maybe, a, no, no, probably 18, 19 bottles on this day alone. Uh, this is not a winery you'll find. This is Platinum Bench, not a common wine you will find in a lot of wineries. I don't even think of uh, Savon Wines of BC has this. Uh, they are a combination of bakery and winery, uh, but their bread sells out by about 11 o'clock, so good luck. Um, so this is a very small boutique winery. We got one bottle from them, um, just because it was selling out. We always feel guilty. Uh, that's the other thing is that um, you feel you feel you like you want to buy a bottle at every place you go to and if you're going to six or seven wineries go right ahead and get that but if you are going to a lot of wineries 60 or so wineries uh, you end up packing a lot of wine bottles so we ended up packing probably at least 70 or 80 bottles another 30 were probably shipped back uh, this is desert hills which is one of the most beautiful uh, locations in Osoya. It's just a beautiful place. Nicest guy, too. Oh, my God. The guy was so nice. Um, I would wager a guess that uh, he might have been Spanish, Portuguese, or, or Greek, but uh, he definitely had a European personality. And I know I, I am Portuguese, so I know... Oh, there she is. Hello. That's the girlfriend. Yeah, not very busy on August. Still warm outside. We like the way these guys run their business. You can order whatever bottles you want uh, to ship back. You, the, a lot of these uh, subscription ones, you basically get which bottles they send you. Desert doesn't do that. You can choose which bottles you want. So this is the only place, the only winery that we actually got our subscription to. So we actually get six bottles from these guys every few months. Just got one recently. Um, I really love the way this guy worked. Thank you. So we got six bottles shipped to us from these guys and got six more just a few months later. Very nice wine. Probably some of the best red and a lot of every winery had a dog. In case of that one, a very, very big dog. A great, um, great bouquet on the, on the whites and the reds are probably one of my favorites as well. Uh, uh, I was probably saying the whites were probably my favorite at uh, Desert Hills. And uh, I also found out that uh, I, I became less stigmatized about liking whites and rosés and the ice wines. And a lot of people kind of put pressure on me to get more into reds. And I do like my reds, but I've noticed how strong the whites are in the BC region. So don't feel bad if you want to load up on whites and dessert wines. And ports. Not a lot of places do ports, but... Um, he actually mentions about this wine having a, 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 a kind of a scent of bacon. It really does. It really has a strong sense of bacon, which is really surprising. Yeah, this guy's fantastic. I'm still trying to figure out exactly which wines I like. I kind of kind of go with the flow. So if someone asked me, do I like the Pinot Noir or do I like... Um, you know, Syrah, and I, it kind of depends. Like, there's certain Syrahs I like, certain Syrahs I don't like. Um, but generally, Pinot Noir I seem to get along with a bit more than most of the other ones. Um, I like the Petites, uh, the Petite Syrah, Petite, uh, and so forth. Right. 99% of the wineries that have a wine club when the shipping time comes for those commitments, you get case wine at your door. So, for us, we don't do that. Two weeks prior, 
the centurion meal with the rest of the wines that we have chosen for the shipping. Right. If you're okay with our mix, you leave alone, wine will show up. Otherwise, you reply with your own choice, whatever you want, that's what you want. This is great, especially if you have friends that uh, also nice. like the wine and they want to come in with you. So we ended up getting a few extra ports. Because uh, I love port. I love port. Because I'm Portuguese, so it helps. So you have a port there? I love, I love port. Oh, yeah. Whenever there's a port, I, I dive into it. I don't care. A lot of these places, uh, there's an extra expense of the ice wine in port. Oh, definitely, definitely spend that. Get, get in on that absolutely every single time. Later on, I try to get my uh, cameras a bit more stable. But this is just day one. This is only a handful of the wineries on day one. We try to hit up uh, a lot more and get more video for the uh, for the second, for the first, for the uh, for the second, third, and fourth, and fifth days, and so forth. But first day was just basic. I only had video from a handful of locations. But later on, I try to get video for more of them, and uh, we'll go into that uh, as 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 I make them. But uh, this is just shows you how amazing the wineries are in this region, especially between uh, Soyuz and Oliver. Technically, all these wineries are in Oliver, uh, not in Soyuz, even though a lot of them are closer to Soyuz. But uh, our place, we actually stayed in Soyuz. Um, but uh, it's further, I mean, obviously, it's, it's depending most, for most people, a lot of these wineries are closer to uh, to you. Uh, we live in Prince George, so this is, so this was actually further away. So uh, I, mean, I, I lament having to um, to drive this far out, but it's absolutely worth it. But this is just day one. I hope you guys enjoy it, and, and uh, I will come back uh, with day two. Okay. And we bought chocolate. Work your way around the dog.